ECDC On Air, the podcast of the European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control. Keeping up to date with European epidemiology. Hello and welcome to ECDC On Air, the podcast by the European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control. I'm your host, Andrea, recording from Stockholm, Sweden. Today we will be discussing the latest findings regarding Candidozyma auris. This is a fungus that is often drug-resistant and it is spreading in European hospitals. This is definitely a threat to patient safety across Europe. To help us understand what the situation is, what the current gaps are, for example, in infection prevention and control and in surveillance, I am here today with Dr. Demantis Pleshuras. He is the head of section for antimicrobial resistance and healthcare-associated infections at ECDC. Welcome, Diamantis. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for inviting me. Let's start with the basics. What is Candidozyma auris, and why is it such a concern for European hospitals and other healthcare settings? Candidozyma auris is a drug-resistant fungus that was only discovered in 2009 and for the first time was identified as a cause of outbreaks in Europe in 2014, and since then it has spread quite widely. It is a concern because it has the ability to cause serious infections in severely ill patients, then these infections can be life-threatening, and it's also quite uh, difficult to treat. Another point, and probably the most Uh, worrisome is that uh, Candidozyma auris causes outbreaks, that is, it can be transmitted from one patient to the uh, next patient, and also it uh, contaminates the environment, and this makes it very difficult to control. Now that we understand what the fungus is and why it is concerning and why it causes in hospitals, let's talk a little bit about the data. Um, The survey shows that there is uh, a steep increase. Can you walk us through the findings? Yes, of course. Between 2013 and 2023, there were more than 4,000 cases reported in uh, the European Union and European Economic Area. And only 2023, there were more than 1,300 cases. Uh, So uh, this is really a very steep increase. Five countries across uh, the European Union have reported the largest number of cases, and these are Spain, Greece, Italy, Romania, and Germany. This sounds like a big change in only one year. Is this, is this a worrying trend? Yes, because uh, the situation has evolved from only a few individual cases to widespread uh, dissemination of uh, the fungus across uh, many hospitals in, these, in some of these countries, affecting whole regions. So this is a really very uh, large change and it is of a high concern. These changes are also described in in different ways in the survey. There are terms like outbreaks or regional endemicity. Can you please explain what the difference between those two are? How are they different? Yes, of course. I mean, an outbreak means that there are a few or um, a limited number of cases in one or a few hospitals. And this means usually that the situation can be easily tracked and it is possible to control. While regional endemicity means that uh, Candidozyma auris has uh, spread widely in the hospitals in uh, one region or even at a national level, and this makes it uh, very difficult to control. In these cases, it is not possible to distinguish uh, uh, outbreaks, it's just uh, only a large number of cases. With those terms in mind, are there any countries where endemicity is regional already? Where is, it, where is CR is spreading rapidly? Greece, Italy, Romania, and Spain uh, have uh, a regional or even national endemicity. And these are the countries where uh, the uh, fungus has been causing the largest problems. Behind every number that are human beings, and here we're talking about patients in hospitals or in other healthcare settings. Um, Before, you said that the fungus could cause severe infections in critically ill patients. Can you tell me a little bit how these infections look like? 
Indeed, candidosis maoris can cause uh, severe infections in seriously ill patients, like for example patients who are in an intensive care unit or who have been uh, subjected to major surgical procedures. Uh, and the most uh, severe infection ca- that uh, candidosima auris causes is called candidemia, which uh, means that uh, the fungus has entered the blood uh, circulation. But it can also cause other infections, uh, such as, uh, for example, infections of the urinary tract or infections of surgical uh, uh, wounds. And uh, another point that we need to keep in mind is that uh, often, Candidosis maoris uh, is just colonizes the skin of the patient and then without causing any symptoms. But still, in these cases, the uh, fungus can be transmitted to other patients or contaminate the environment. And this is one of the reasons why uh, the control of outbreaks with this fungus is uh, very hard. The survey also mentions uh, that the fungus is drug resistant. Can you tell us a little bit about the difficulties with treatment and maybe talk also about mortality? Yes, Candidosima auris actually uh, is resistant to uh, first-line antifungal drugs. And in many cases, it is also resistant to most currently available antifungal drugs. And even in rare cases, it is resistant to all available uh, drugs, which means that in these cases, we have no alternative to treat the patients. And in general, treatment of these infections is uh, difficult and mortality is quite high. In cases of uh, candidemia, when the fungus uh, enters the the blood uh, circulation, mortality has been reported to be 30 to 60 percent. But of course, we need to interpret these figures with caution because, as we said, these patients who uh, uh, suffer from uh, such infections have already often life-threatening underlying conditions and it is difficult to distinguish the contribution of the infection to the potential death of the patient. That sounds very serious, but is there, is there any hope? Are there any success stories in Europe? Yes, there are uh, some encouraging observations. There are uh, many countries and uh, hospitals that had Uh, individual cases or even uh, um, outbreaks, and they managed to control them with uh, appropriate infection prevention and control measures. So it is possible to uh, control Candidosima auris, but uh, uh, it uh, it takes uh, uh, appropriate measures and uh, it is uh, hard to control it. This brings us to the the bigger picture. And we can talk here about about measures that are being taken at national level and where there are gaps in national preparedness, especially when we're talking about, for example, surveillance or infection prevention and control. What did the survey reveal in this area? The survey indeed showed that there are still gaps in uh, national preparedness in terms mostly of national surveillance and uh, of uh, the availability of national infection prevention and control guidelines. Only 17 out of the 36 countries participating in the survey had in place uh, surveillance at the national level, and only 15 of the countries had national uh, infection prevention and control guidelines. In terms of laboratory preparedness, things were uh, better, as uh, even uh, 29 out of the 36 countries uh, had in place expert laboratories and uh, 23 countries uh, had uh, refer- uh, pr- uh, provided reference testing. So the news are, are a little bit balanced. On one side, there are gaps, and on the other side, there are positives. But what does this mean in practice? Wh- what do the gaps mean in practice? So national surveillance means that uh, hospitals are required to report the cases so that uh, uh, the situation can be easily monitored. If uh, these data are not available, it means that the extent of the spread of candidosima auris is unknown and coordinated measures cannot be taken. Lack of national guidance for infection prevention and uh, control, which includes guidance, for example, for isolation uh, or uh, cleaning or contact tracing, 
means that uh, the hospitals uh, may not know what are the necessary measures. And all this, of course, leads to missed opportunities to uh, control the situation in a timely manner. Okay, but you also said before that despite these being missed opportunities, um, there are success stories, which means this can be fixed. What can be done at national level and what can be done in hospitals to stop or reduce the spread of candidosis maoris? Well, at a country level, what can be done is to establish surveillance and uh, also provide uh, uh, guidance for both laboratory testing and infection prevention and control. While at the hospital level, it's uh, quite important that uh, uh, the healthcare staff is uh, alert and prepared to identify uh, in a timely manner the cases and uh, implement the appropriate infection prevention and control measures. And very importantly, when a patient is transferred from one healthcare facility to another healthcare facility, that the receiving hospital is notified that the, pace, the patient is uh, carrying candida auris. And of course, ECDC has been monitoring the situation closely in the past years. Can you tell us what ECDC has been doing? What has been ECDC's role in the whole situation? ECDC has been monitoring and assessing the situation through four surveys since uh, 2018. And uh, in the latest survey of 2024, it included also EU enlargement uh, countries. ECDC has also been uh, producing rapid risk assessments uh, that uh, have been including uh, options for uh, infection prevention and control, uh, laboratory uh, identification, and even uh, preparedness. This is the fourth survey that ECDC produces and publishes regarding the situation on Candidozima auris. Can you tell me in a few words and in a very easy way to understand for our audience what the survey includes? Yes, of course. Uh, the survey includes the number of reported cases and uh, outbreaks across the countries of the European Union and European Economic Area, but also includes the national preparedness and laboratory capacity. A lab national preparedness means that we are looking into the availability of uh, guidance for uh, uh, laboratory testing and infection prevention and control. You have shared a lot of valuable information today, Diamantis. Before we wrap up, can you please give me your top three messages for our audience? Well, the first message is that we need to act fast. Without early identification and implementation of appropriate infection prevention control measures, candidosis maoris will continue to spread fast. The hospitals and the, the healthcare providers need to be alert and prepared so that uh, the, ca any cases are identified quickly and appropriate measures are taken, even if they have not yet seen a case in their hospital. And finally, I want to say that control is still possible, but it requires coordinated action from both the healthcare facilities, but also at a national level. Thank you very much, Demantis. Thank you. That's all for today's episode. A big thank you to Dr. Demantis Plasuras for helping us understand this serious public health issue. If you're interested in learning more about Candidosima auris, please visit our website, ecdc.europa.eu. And if you found this episode interesting, please remember to subscribe, to rate, or to leave us a comment. Remember also to follow us on social media for all the updates about ECDC. Thank you for listening, and until next time, stay safe and stay informed.